We have support today from Vermont Construction Company's Roofing Division and Norwich Solar. And let's not pause any longer. People here want to cheer. We are in St. Johnsbury. All of you here today, let us know you're here. There are perhaps 7,500 people here in the streets of St. Johnsbury, maybe more. I'm at the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium alongside this crowd and with Mark Breen, who is here for the Sun, Moon, and You event. Mark, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Planetarium director here, what are you feeling? Uh, this is absolute excitement. I mean, there is nothing that will ever compare with this. Uh, we can already feel the light changing. Uh, all of these thousands of people are looking through their sun. sun solar glasses they they you know everybody's I, I don't think I've seen this much excitement anywhere <laughs> <laughs> as you can perhaps hear in our microphones there is a breeze the breeze has come in this afternoon with it some wispy clouds but it is a bright sunny day here in st. Johnsbury blue skies all day long the local streets are shut down and folks have been spending the morning and early afternoon visiting the museum um, waiting in line for the diner <laughs> visiting the food vendors and the tents there is perhaps a baby goat here you may hear through the broadcast I have <laughs> not laid eyes on the goat, but I have heard it. And we're going to spend the next hour with you as this total solar eclipse passes overhead. Uh, we're going to hear from people around our region to learn what kinds of astronomical questions you have for Mark Breen and what you're doing right now during this exciting experience. And uh, we are going to, of course, take some time to quietly reflect during totality itself. I'll give you some cues about where totality is starting in different parts of the state. And after totality, we'll check in with some state officials for all of you in various parts of Vermont and beyond who are thinking about leaving right after the eclipse. So if you have any questions or want to share what's going on in your community, give us a call. Our number is 1-800-639-2211. That's 1-800-639-2211 or you can send an email to eclipse at vermontpublic.org. Can you describe where we are in the eclipse right now, Mark Breen? Right, so the moon is approximately half covering the sun. Uh, so we have this wonderful crescent sun up there. Uh, some folks have been uh, looking at it uh, through our uh, solar uh, monitors here, which is great. Um, you can easily see it through your eclipse glasses. Um, I've been suggesting to people that you can use very simple ways of viewing it, including using Yes, your fingers. If you simply cross your fingers, you can look down in that shadow. So not at the Don't sun. Don't look but, at the sun. Right. You're looking, you're letting the sun come down. And in the little holes between your fingers, you'll see little crescent suns. Uh, perhaps those of you here today didn't bring your colanders with you. But if you're listening from home and you have a colander, you can do right. the same thing. It's like a, a pinhole viewer without having to make a pinhole viewer. You don't look through the colander at the sun. Right. You look in the shade that the colander makes and all those little dots of sun become crescent suns. Well, earlier today at about 2.07 our time, the eclipse shadow started in Mexico, and then it took an arc across the United States, hitting Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. Right around now, totality, when the moon completely covers the sun, is uh, approaching the Illinois-Indiana border and making its way toward Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York, and then on to us here in Vermont. Before it leaves the United States at the northern tip of Maine, it will have crossed 15 states, although a couple of them just barely. Just barely. That's right. Um, the eclipse shadow, as I understand it, Mark, travels slower near the equator and then speeds up as it gets closer to the poles. How fast is it going over this part of the country? Right. Over us, it's moving at about 2,300 miles an hour. Uh, it's, it's amazingly fast, and, and you're right. It's simply the curve of the Earth in terms of how quickly that shadow moves. If you can think of, of a shadow moving on a curved surface, you get to the edge, and it's going to move across that edge much quicker. But where we see it, it, it looks kind of slow. It, it, yes, it seems kind of slow, although if you think about it, you know that's a pretty large shadow. It's over 100 miles in diameter, and yet... It only lasts for a minute and a half. You can hear the buzz picking up here oh, in St. Johnsbury. We are more than halfway eclipsed. We have a nice view here. What yes. are we looking at as well on this monitor? Yeah, so one of the things that's kind of interesting to notice is where the moon is covering the sun because it's coming from what appears to be below the sun and then sliding upward. And that has to do with the actual motion of the moon. We, we usually think, of course, the moon, the sun, they move from east to west across the sky. But the moon's actual motion in its orbit 
is going from west to east. And so that's what's happening. It's actually sliding up and will cover the last little bits of the sun on the top part of the moon. And then the sun reappears on the bottom. If you have a question for us, even if you're here in St. Johnsbury, we don't have a microphone for you, but you can write to eclipse at vermontpublic.org or you can call 800-639-2211. We'd love to know from you in the crowd and anywhere that you're viewing the eclipse, what does it feel like for you? What are you doing? What's it happening in your community today? Again, 1-800-639-2211. And we got a question from Danielle who asks, does the solar eclipse happen all over the world? Ah, excellent question. It is not all over the world. Uh, the eclipse path itself ranges from about 110 to 120 miles in this particular eclipse. It can be much narrower than that. It can't get much wider um, just because of the size of the moon. Uh, but uh, the entire United States will see at least a little bit of an eclipse, a partial eclipse as we call it. But uh, no, these actually cover less than one thousandth of one percent of the Earth's surface. So very few places are seeing this. Uh, we were talking a couple months ago, Mark, in preparation for this about how long usually between total solar eclipses uh, any one place is going to have. And some places saw totality in 2017 and are getting it again. That's right. Where? Yeah, uh, down in western Kentucky and, and parts of Illinois and Indiana, there's a, a little spot right in there where the two lines cross. And so these people have seen now their second total solar eclipse in just seven years. And just by contrast, Burlington's last total solar eclipse, 1569. And if you live in Los Angeles, you are in the middle of a 1,500-year drought between total solar eclipses. Yeah, so it, it is truly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. What parts of Vermont are going to see the most totality today? Yeah, so the center line of the eclipse, in other words, the, the longest period of the eclipse, runs through St. Albans, and it cuts right across near Highgate Falls, and then it goes into the eastern townships up near Ayers Cliff. And in some communities in Vermont, the line is so distinct. If, if you're in Middlebury, for example, or Barrie, some parts of the community have totality and some don't. That's right. And, and it's not an exact line. So in other words, uh, you know, NASA can do all the calculations it can, but we're still actually finding that there are these very slight variations. It may make a difference of 1,000 or even 2,000 feet, which may not sound like much, but it'll place one house in totality and one outside totality. Again, if you'd like to call in with your questions, our number is 800-639-2211. Tom is calling in from Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Hi, Tom. Go right ahead. Good afternoon. How are you? Well, thanks. I'm down in Connecticut. We're pretty much cloudy here right now. It seems to be getting a little darker. And I was wondering, I'm listening to you saying that a thousand feet could make a difference see the eclipse. I was wondering, what time do I see it around here? And when would the next one be, maybe? Well, I certainly know that in terms of your timing, it should be very similar to, to what it is here, maybe a few minutes earlier, but the, the speed of that shadow is so great that it doesn't make more than about a five minute difference. So I would say, you know, in your location in Connecticut, probably between 315 and 330 would be the maximum amount of eclipse. But no, not totality. But not totality there, no, about 95%. So totality, what's the difference between 99% and totality? Yes, that's one of those, it, it sounds like, oh, 99%, that's probably good enough. But it really is completely different because there are things that happen during totality that don't happen during any other partial phase of the eclipse. The only thing, only time that you can see what we call the sun's corona, it's the sun's atmosphere, is only when the sun is completely obscured. And so it does really make it a very special moment. And that's why uh, even, you know, today, people literally chase eclipses. They, they go around the world finding those locations for that really short. I mean, it's only a couple of minutes for the most part, uh, but it's that special uh, to, to find those locations. How many of you listening here within the sounds of our voices are chasing this eclipse, came here to Vermont, to St. Johnsbury, just for the eclipse? Oh. 
Wow. That's a lot of people. I mean, presumably everybody here came for the eclipse, but we've been hearing from people from Georgia. We've been hearing from people from all over who drove here, drove up because they want to see this. This is really a special thing for people. Oh, very much so. Uh, and it, so there's the unique quality. It's, it's, I think it's fascinating that there is the science end of things where there are things that scientists, for example, can study only during total solar eclipses. There are discoveries that were made because like what? of... Well, uh, for example, the sun's corona, because it is only visible during a total eclipse, uh, scientists early on in the 1800s actually discovered what the sun specifically was made out of. But it happened during total solar eclipses. Later on, Einstein's theory of relativity was actually proven during a total solar eclipse. So, so these are really, you know, significant uh, events. And yet, it's also just fascinating and I, I've heard from a lot of people, this is my first total solar eclipse. I've never experienced one before. But there is also the experience of it. It's how it feels. It, it's how a, a shared experience feels. Um, and there is nothing else like it. Well, we're going to get to experience it in about uh, <laughs> maybe 20 minutes here, a little bit less than that. Uh, Joan is calling in from New Haven, Connecticut. Hi, Joan. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Joan. Hello. Yes. Hi, we can hear you. Go right ahead, Joan. Can you hear me? I lived in Lindenville in the 60s, and I saw an eclipse, but I don't remember what year. And we used a pinhole to mm. watch it. Yeah, Joan, that is so cool. Thank you for bringing that up, and uh, I am glad to hear that you're thinking of Vermont here from your home now in Connecticut. Um, Mark, tell us a little bit. You told us about how to do this with your hands or a colander, why and what people can do if they don't have solar eclipse glasses right now to make their own pinholes. Right, so, so pinholes are basically something that uh, we've known about for over a thousand years, uh, and the idea is that when you get just a little bit of sunlight through a very small hole, it actually essentially creates a small focused camera, and we call it a pinhole camera, and so as a result, you can create that with your hands. You can also use a colander, like just a spaghetti strainer, and you'll see little crescents. But if you do want to make a, a pinhole box, you use just a small piece of foil. You cut two holes in the box, one for you to look through. And in that pinhole, you put a little foil over the hole. You poke a hole in it. You get a little bit of light that goes through, and you get an image of the sun in the back of the box. And you can do that right now, uh, wherever you are. If you don't have a box, you can also just pop, pop a, a hole using a pencil or something in a piece of paper. And again, look down at the ground, let the sunlight shine through the paper, and you'll see the sun uh, on the shadow. And if you are watching this eclipse, you want to make sure you are doing so safely. You should never look at a partially eclipsed sun with your bare eyes. Right. The sun's rays are intensified and actually can cause permanent eye damage. And you won't necessarily know it's happening uh, because it can take hours for those spots to appear. So please do not look at the sun with your bare eyes with the exception of those few moments of totality when it is safe to take off your eclipse glasses only for totality. That's right. And why can you do that in totality given the fact that there is still a ring that we are going to see around that shadow of the moon. Right, so what we are seeing, the sun's corona, its atmosphere, is about one million times fainter than the surface of the sun. And so it is not, not at all bright enough to create any damage as far as your eyes are concerned. And it is kind of simple. When you are looking through your eclipse glasses, you'll see little tiny hints of sunlight. And when they completely disappear, that's when it's safe to take your eclipse glasses off. And in the case today, with the moon sliding up and to the left, the, moon, the sun will reappear on the bottom edge. So the minute you see just a little speck of sunlight, you put your glasses back on. As we approach 315 right now, totality is hitting Ohio, Akron, and Cleveland approaching totality right now. Let's go to Annika, who's calling in from South Burlington. Hi, Annika. Hi, Annika, you're on the air. Go right ahead. Do you have a question? All right, we can't hear Annika right now. We'll okay. see if we can come back to Annika. Let's go to Max, who's calling in from Duxbury. Hi, Max. Go ahead. What um, are there total eclipses in Antarctica? Ooh, good question. Are there total eclipses in Antarctica? Yes, there are. Um, and because it's on the bottom edge of the Earth, they actually can cover a larger area. 
just because the shadow is going to be spread out on the edge of the Earth like that. So they do have eclipses both in the Arctic and the Antarctic. Do you think we can get 7,500 people uh, quickly to Antarctica to see the next one? Not quickly, but I could start taking reservations. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Diane, who's calling in from South Carolina. Hi, Diane. Go right ahead. Hi. I just wanted to say thank you for this because I grew up in Vermont. I miss Vermont. My brother just drove up to Vermont to watch the eclipse in person, and I don't get to do it. <laughs> so I am watching the eclipse <laughs> from St. Ron John Dury on VermontPublic.org and loving it. Thank you. Oh, Diane, uh, I'm glad that we could give you a taste of Vermont from South Carolina, and we're all uh, wishing you well from back in home. Again, if you'd like to call in and ask a question or tell us how you are experiencing the eclipse, our number, even if you're here in St. Johnsbury, you can call it 1-800-639-2211, or you can email eclipse at VermontPublic. Dot org. Let's go to Ella, who's calling in from Wisconsin. Hi, Ella. Hi. Um, I was wondering, um, like, what about the solar eclipse makes like your eyes like blind for a little, or makes your eyes hurt if you look at it? Yeah, good question. So more about safety here, Mark. Why, when you look at the eclipse, does it make your eyes hurt? Right. So our eyes are designed so that. When the sun is full, it's really bright. It hurts to look at it. But when the eclipse is taking place, we're seeing less and less of the sun. What our eyes don't understand, what they're not designed to detect, is that little sliver of sun is just as intense as the entire surface of the sun. And so that intensity creates the damage in your eye. And you don't even feel it. Your eye doesn't have any nerves, so you wouldn't feel uh, any particular problem, but you would notice it afterward. Here in uh, St. Johnsbury, it's still pretty bright out. Mm -hmm. we're, we're very close to totality. It still doesn't seem very dark or getting very cold yet. No, although I think the quality of the light is, is very different. It feels a little thinner. I think one of the things that people will tend to notice as we get closer and closer to totality is that the light almost seems sharper so that we have a smaller source of light and so our shadows become a little bit more crisp. Um, and, and so you notice differences like that that Otherwise, you, you would never have that experience. Um, Dick wrote in to ask, is it just a coincidence that the moon fits perfectly across the sun? Why is the moon the right size? That is, in some ways, absolutely a, a happy coincidence. Um, the moon is actually moving away from the Earth and has been since it was formed uh, you know, over four billion years ago. What's happening is, though, it only moves away by about an inch and a half per year. So during essentially human civilization, the moon is at the right distance that it is just about the same size as the sun, which also is one of the reasons that eclipses are so rare. It has to be perfectly lined up. If it's even slightly off, we don't get a total eclipse. Right. We have annular eclipses, right, too, where mm -hmm. when the moon is a little bit um, not quite at the exact distance that it needs to be to fully cover the sun. Right. The moon's orbit is slightly oval or elliptical, and so when it's closer, we get a larger, longer eclipse. Um, when it is farther away, it's actually far enough away that you end up with a ring of light around the sun. It's something you can't ever look at it without eclipse glasses, but it's another fascinating event. We had one here 30 years ago. If you're getting text alerts from the state, you may have just realized the state telling drivers who are on the roads right now during eclipse, turn on your headlights during totality. It is going to get dark. It's going to get dark during totality. You will need headlights. Um, it will look a little bit like we're in nighttime. We may even be able to see some celestial objects. That's right. A few of the planets are visible. And so above the sun, we would be looking for the planet Jupiter. Below the sun would be the planet Venus. And if it is clear enough, or even spots of clear skies, you may see a few of the brighter stars, including some of the stars in Orion, um, and almost overhead, a star named Capella. Totality right near, hitting Buffalo, New York, and Niagara Falls, moving ever closer to Vermont. Laurel is calling in from Danville. Hi, Laurel. Who, who really? Hi. Um, I. I have a question. You can hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Oh, okay. Um, Mark, you did address this, but I just don't understand the moon moving from the west to the east. We, I thought the sun must be going behind the moon, and the moon was more stationary. So can you explain in more detail? 
Sure. So, you, so the Earth is spinning. We spin around once every 24 hours, and it makes it look like the sun goes across the sky. And so that motion is what we're used to. In fact, even at night, when we watch the moon or the stars, they appear to go from east to west. But the moon's actual move, movement around the Earth, which of course takes 29 and a half days, and so it's much slower than the 24 hours, we don't notice that it's actually moving from west to east. And so that's the motion that you're seeing. And that kind of motion uh, actually will shift the moon to the other side of the sun. So just think of it this way. In a few more days, you will see a crescent moon over in the west. Nicole is with us from San Francisco, California. Hi, Nicole. Go right ahead. Hi. Can you hear me? We can yes, hear we you. Can. Okay, good. Thank you. Hi, I'm in San Francisco. I have no questions because I don't actually understand the eclipse other than it's beautiful and spiritual. But I wanted to just thank you for being live with this. Vermont is basically my second home, and my good friends in Essex are having a big party um, out on their uh, their land to watch it, and I can't be there. So just so excited that so many people are there. and. Um, we can do this coast to coast. And also, we are not seeing much of it here. So, <laughs> thank you. I'm really sorry to hear you're not he uh, seeing much of it, Nicole. I hope it's not too cloudy and too foggy where you are and that you at least get that partiality. But it's such a wonderful thing here in St. Johnsbury to be with all these people live and then to think about how many people are listening to the stream or watching the stream and feeling a connection to Vermont through this event. There's that connection that you have with your community in person. And then there's a bonding and a connection that people who maybe very far away Way, still feel with these communities. Right, I think that's one of the marvelous things about this eclipse, which really does cover, at least in some fashion, all of the country. Uh, it kind of brings us all together that way. Joel is with us from Charlotte, North Carolina. I almost said Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> you can tell I'm a Vermonter. Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Joel. You're on the air. Hi, can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Go right ahead, Joel. Oh, we lost Joel. Um, I, one of the questions that Joel, I think, was going to prompt us here for is a little bit about um, what happens during totality that you can see or do that's cool. We have a note from Robert who wants to know, are there any cool experiments you can actually do as a layperson during totality? I'm not aware of a, 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 a specific experiment, although one of the things that is certainly helpful to understand is the exact timing of that. So if you have the right equipment and uh, you, you, know, you can time out exactly when the sun completely disappears or when it reappears, that information actually is very helpful in terms of if you can compile all of that data, you can get a little better sense of exactly where that shadow was. Because one of the things that we don't think about is the Earth's surface is not even. We have higher spots and lower spots, and that's going to actually change the shape of the shadow as well. We are getting closer and closer here. Um, you can really sense a difference in the light. For me, I keep thinking I should take off my sunglasses, and then I realize I don't have them on. It looks like you're wearing some really right. dark sunglasses here. Uh, all, everybody here in St. Johnsbury is turning away from us, Mark, to look at the <laughs> sun. Sure? Yeah, it's and it is tempting to look up at it with your bare mm -hmm. eyes. Again, mm -hmm. please do not do that until you're in totality. We'll tell you when some spots in Vermont are reaching and nearing totality. But what can we expect? I think one of the things that you'll notice is you may actually feel the temperature drop. I mean, we are losing energy from the sun. So during this period of time, and I actually, if you had to say, I would say the temperature's probably dropped two or three degrees already. We have one of our meteorologists here at the museum measuring this all the way through the eclipse, so we'll have that information. Um, so that's one of the things that you'll be able to experience. Also, if you happen to see any birds nearby, or perhaps you have some chickens, uh, you may notice that they actually will go to roost. This is a, a very strange thing for them. They don't particularly or they're not aware of eclipses, but they know, oh, it's getting dark, oh, time to go to roost. And so and that's a very common uh, thing to, to notice. Uh, people have observed this over centuries. Wow. What are you most excited for, given that this is something you have waited a whole lifetime to see? Well, uh, one, I was excited about this kind of event with thousands of people to share it with. But just like everybody that, that's never seen a total eclipse, I can't wait until that moment where there is no sun out there at all, when you can see a couple of stars or planets, when you can see the sun's corona, and 
You can just feel the change uh, in the atmosphere, and I don't mean just the physical atmosphere. I mean just how everybody is feeling. I can sense a difference here in the atmosphere in St. Johnsbury. It does feel like people are, are really anticipating this moment. It is getting darker by the second. Uh, we are really getting close here. The eclipse should now be approaching or hitting Plattsburgh. It's going to make its way very quickly then toward the Champlain Islands. As I said, I'm going to give you some updates as we move through totality because this is a pretty wonderful and amazing experience to share with all of you who are listening and watching as well as those who are here with us in St. Johnsbury. And so we are going to give you some updates as this moves, but I, I do want to offer everybody an opportunity here as it gets so dark um, to just experience this eclipse. So we're going to have some music. We're going to listen together. We're going to quietly, maybe not so quietly, do whatever <laughs> uh, hits you. Um, but we're going to experience this as we move forward. We are uh, less than a minute now to totality in St. Albans mm -hmm. and Burlington. Yeah. So let's listen to this music and let it wash over us as we move through and towards totality. Totality is starting in Burlington and St. Albans. St. Albans will get three minutes and 30 seconds of totality. Burlington will get three minutes and 10 seconds. The sun is covered by the moon, darkness falling now in those communities. We have about two wow. minutes until totality hits us here in St. Johnsbury. It's getting very, it very dark in St. Johnsbury. Noticeable. And you perhaps with your eclipse glasses on still, look, start looking at, in just moments for little tiny specks of light along the edge of the sun. That's sunlight coming through the moon's mountain valleys. Wow. They're called Bailey's beads. We may also see a bright spark of sunlight with a curve that's known as the diamond ring effect. And we'll see that both just before totality and again just after totality. You are still in totality in Burlington and St. Albans. Uh, we have about 30 seconds to totality in St. Johnsbury. It is dark as night. Lights are coming on. The street lights are on. little bits are disappearing. Mark, we can see maybe a celestial object in the sky. Yes, yes. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Oh my. That is Venus. We are, we are in totality. We are in totality. In St. Johnsbury. <laughs> you can see the red edges. See the red spots? Yes. Those are solar flares. Wow. Wow. If you'd like, take a quick look. Mark is handing me binoculars. Oh my goodness. Oh. You can see the red. Yes. Coming out. Jupiter the is almost overhead. Did you see it? Totality is now ending in Burlington. If you're in the Champlain Valley, you should already have or be putting on your safety eyewear. Still another few seconds of totality in St. Albans. People there are getting the longest view of the eclipse. Totality now nearly ending in St. Albans, ending. Still a few more seconds here in St. Johnsbury. Totality ooh, ooh. ending ooh. in St. Johnsbury. Wow. 
That's the diamond ring. And immediately, the light starts coming back. It's almost like oh. daybreak here in St. Johnsbury. Oh. Light oh. immediately coming back into the sky. You can still feel the awe and wonder. I'm certainly still feeling right. it. I, I got really Chills. teary. Yeah. Still some parts of Vermont have a little bit of totality left. If you are east of St. Johnsbury, totality is approaching, or you are perhaps in it already. Uh -huh. A little breathless. We're gonna just give it a couple more minutes. I think we all need a few minutes to a few seconds to collect ourselves. Uh. <laughs> At this point, eclipse totality will have passed for all of Vermont. It is now headed for parts of northern New Hampshire and Quebec. Wow, Mark, <laughs> you're, you're shaking. literally shaking. What, what did that feel like to you? I, I can't necessarily describe it, except in some ways it's exactly what I expected, just based on people's experience, that it was a surreal and otherworldly experience. You, there is nothing I've ever experienced like it before. No, I mean, there really isn't. Seeing that ring yes. is something else. Yeah, that was stunning. And I was surprised, actually, that you could see those bright pink orange spots on the edges of the, the, of the eclipse. Because really, you're seeing solar flares, which ordinarily you only see in some special photography that's done by NASA and so forth, but you could easily see them. And I was reading a, a description, and this goes back to the 1800s. He was, uh, they didn't know about solar uh, flares just yet, but they were describing that there were these red protuberances, and it was so amazing that Francis Bailey, who saw this in 1836, actually traveled to Venice six wow. years later to see, so that, to kind of check what was it that I was seeing. We have more time for phone calls. In a few minutes, we're going to be hearing from the director of Vermont Emergency Management. So if you are wondering about when you have a, a good window to leave, I would suggest not doing it right now. Don't get in your car and drive away. There is a lot of traffic on the roads. So we're going to get more from VEM in a minute. But we're also, we would love to know how you experienced the eclipse. What did that feel like to you if you were in totality? Our number is 800-639-2211. You can also email eclipse at vermontpublic.org. Our, our number again, 800-639-2211. We have people listening from all over. Mike is calling in now from California. Hi, Mike. You're on the air. Hi, thanks for uh, taking my call. Um, just wanted to say I'm here in Costa Mesa, California. Uh, my wife Lindsay and I are really good friends. Moved to St. John's very a few minutes, a few minutes, <laughs> a few years ago, and uh, it's wonderful to be able to share this with them. It makes us miss them a little bit less. So, Gretchen, Pete, Arlo, and Brom, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for uh, sharing this experience with us and for calling in. It's a, a pretty amazing thing to be able to witness this eclipse. So what's happening now that's just sort of the, the, the other side of what we just experienced? Right, and, and, and they really don't want to lose that opportunity. Uh, so once again, we have these opportunities to see the crescent sun, again, through your eclipse glasses, or you can try to create that same thing uh, through your fingers, through a colander, uh, through some kind of pinhole. So there are uh, a lot of fascinating you know, moments still ahead of us, and just in terms of, and watching the light slowly come back into the area. I think, I, actually, one of the things that I noticed Beef, as we were getting just moments from totality, is it really, it almost appear, appeared like this inky black shadow was coming towards yeah. us. I, I was surprised to notice that. I was surprised at how quickly the light came back. It felt like the light reappeared more quickly than it had disappeared. Yes, and I think that, one, I think that brilliance 
maybe gave people the the idea, the understanding of why we have to wear these eclipse glasses, even when there's just a sliver of sunlight up there. It was intense when it came out, back out. John is calling in now from Woodbury, Vermont. John, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you experienced. Our experience was we showed up yesterday and we had to snowshoe into our camp <laughs> because, um, well, we're, we're back far enough that trees fell across the wires. We were without electricity and we uh, got past all that. And I mean, it has become the dream that we've been looking forward to is uh, at our cabin at Dog Pond and uh, experiencing uh, experience of this uh, event. John, was it everything you had hoped for? And more. Exceeded <laughs> expectations. That's wonderful. And, and by the way, you folks um, at um, Vermont Public have uh, done an excellent job with this. We appreciate it. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much for that, John. Appreciate it. So glad you got to experience it. Oh, we see the baby goat. You may be here oh, it right now. <laughs> is this a baby or a pygmy? Wow, it is tiny. <laughs> It's, it, this eclipse. is the goat's first eclipse. <laughs> um, imagine that. It is the baby goat's very first eclipse. So wonderful that we could share it with this goat. Thank you very much for coming up to the stage and letting us see. Um, we, we are hearing from so many people who have experienced this, like Ellen in Brattleboro. And Ellen has a question for us as well. Hi, Ellen. Go right ahead. Uh, hi. I was wondering, I, the iOS glasses say not to wear, you know, not to view the sun with the glasses if um, if you have had recent eye surgery, and the other is um, if you have an eye disease. I have macular degeneration, and I'm assuming that that would be considered a disease, but um, I'd love to be able to see some of it. But yeah. Well, I would certainly it suggest to, to yeah, well, but perhaps uh, you can see some of the footage that, that has been uh, collected and, and will continue to be collected and, and sent out. Uh, but the other thing is, if, you know, obviously you need to check with your eye care professional uh, in, in terms of the, the safety aspects of that. Um, I would also let you know, Ellen, that we are broadcasting. We have a view as well. If you go to vermontpublic.org and watch our live stream, you will be able to see this solar scope. That's and, right. and be able to see this eclipse a lot more closely than you would with your glasses. But if you're not able to watch it in person with your glasses, or for whatever reason, if you're not in the path of totality, mm -hmm. if you're not uh, available to leave where you work or where you live, or if you're not mobile, right. there are uh, a lot of reasons that people might not be able to witness this eclipse with their eyes in person. And so I hope you're able to tune to vermontpublic.org or whatever source you have for being able to view this eclipse safely and, and to be able to share this experience. Thank you for calling in, Ellen. Um, we are uh, here now in St. Johnsbury and seeing so many people packing up. It's like oh, the yes. eclipse is over, but how much longer <laughs> do we actually have of partiality? Right, so uh, this began back at about 2.15. So it takes a little bit more than an hour for the moon to fully cover the sun. It takes it an equal amount of time, about an hour and 15 minutes to gradually move away. So uh, the total eclipse is over, but the partial eclipse doesn't end until about 4.38, I believe, this afternoon. 4.38. So we yeah. still got a ton of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So should people stick around? or eh, We've all seen it. Well, I, I, again, you know, I, I think that the, the partial phase of it, I mean, even what it's doing right now, this is a fairly unique experience. Um, We'd have to go back seven years to see something like what we have right now. So this is not something that we see, you know, ordinarily. This is a pretty rare experience. And the next time this is going to happen, I think somebody had asked earlier, at least in parts of southern Vermont, it won't be until the year 2079. Wow, 2079. All right. So it could be a once-in-a-lifetime experience for many. That's right. Um, Deborah and Mish are calling in from Plainfield. Hi, Deborah and Mish. Go right ahead. Hi, folks. Thanks for everything. We were watching uh, from Plainfield, and mm -hmm. we were a little puzzled because the appearance of the crescent after totality seemed to be around the seven o'clock mark on the sun, whereas when it was uh, when the the moon was crossing in front, it, it seemed to be crossing from roughly the five o'clock 
uh, angle towards the middle. So we're a little puzzled uh, as to how that could be. That's all. Okay. We'll, we'll keep listening. Sure. So not being in the center of the eclipse, uh, what you were seeing is, is if you think about the, the fact you've got this you know, circular disc that's moving across, you're actually moving it um, so that, let's just say that the moon's position was slightly more right than center. And so on the left-hand side is where that crescent reappeared. Uh, I'm not sure if that quite makes sense. I, I can sort of visualize it that you've got this disc and again, it's slightly displaced. It wasn't perfectly centered on the sun from here because we are on the edge of totality. So being shifted to the right, it's the left-hand edge that reappeared first. I'd love to know from those of you who experienced this, what it felt like. Was it awe-inspiring? Maybe for you, you had greater expectations and it, it didn't live up to them. I'd, I'd love to hear what you thought it was going to be like and what's happening in your community right now. If you'd like to share your perspective with us again, you can email eclipse at vermontpublic.org or you can call 800-639-2211. That's 1-800-639-2211. Let's talk with uh, one of our reporters elsewhere in Vermont who's mm -hmm. been experiencing this eclipse. Sabine Pooks is a Vermont public re producer, and she's in St. Albans. Hi, Sabine. Nice to talk with you. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi. So what's your experience been like? What is it like in St. Albans? It's very energetic. Uh, it took a while for people to kind of trickle in this morning, but around noon, 1 p.m., Taylor Park here in town really filled up. Um, a lot of families, a lot of kids, and the energy, I think, which is really high here. Before the eclipse, there was a band. Um, and now people are sort of dispersing already, even though it just ended a couple minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So everything, it sounds like, went pretty smoothly in St. Albans? Yes, I haven't seen anything to, uh, you know, to indicate otherwise. There was, there were quite a few police here, and I just saw a lot of them kind of walk away. Everything was pretty peaceful. I actually just saw a couple get engaged right after totality was over, which was really sweet. Um, things seem to be going very well here. Oh, congratulations to the happy couple. That's such a wonderful sweet, memory yes. to be able to have gotten engaged. Sabine, did what did it feel like to you? Did you get to experience it as a human being at all? Yes, it definitely made me well up in a way that I was not expecting. Um, I felt very close to the people around me, which was really lovely, and just thinking about all the people I'd spoken to throughout the day who were there sort of watching it with me, it kind of touched me in a way I wasn't expecting. It was really lovely, and I'm glad I got to be here to see it with all the people who, who came all this way to, to be here today. Were there estimates of how many people actually went to St. Albans for this? I have not heard yet um, a number estimate, but I spoke with the director of the Chamber of Commerce earlier who said that they were sort of expecting big crowds and that those numbers showed up um, in the way that they had kind of predicted, even though she thought maybe they wouldn't come out in the droves that they did. So I know that, um, you know, we got, we got a big crowd here. I haven't yet heard how, how many people, though. Well, Sabine, thank you very much for spending a little time with us as you're running around. I know everybody's trying to get ready to make sure that they have things ready for our newscast. We'll be having live coverage all evening on Vermont Public, so stay tuned for All Things Considered. Sabine Pooks, thanks very much. Thank you. Let's go to Alan, who's calling in from St. Johnsbury. Hi, Alan. Hi there. Um, I have a question for Mark. Uh, sure. I noticed on the calendar it's a new moon. Yes. Does that affect the eclipse at all? That actually is the only time that you could have a solar eclipse. So a new moon is when, they, in long, long ago time, you know, they, they thought about the moon simply growing and then shrinking. And so every time it reappeared in the evening skies, that was the beginning of its phase. And so that's the new part of it. And so uh, since then, you know, we understand a little bit more about how things move around. So essentially, a new moon occurs when it is passing between the earth and the sun but it doesn't line up very often that's why eclipses are rare there's actually a kind of a fascinating idea that the orbit of the moon is tilted at about five degrees which doesn't sound like a lot except you have to realize the moon is only one half of one degree and because it's that small it actually can vary about 20 moon widths that's a a big amount so yeah. that's why it almost never lines up 
Wow. Uh, on the line with us now is Eric Foran, Director of Vermont Emergency Management, to give us a few updates here about how it's been going and what we can expect over the next few hours. Mm -hmm. Eric, hi, nice to talk with you. Hi, thanks for the invite. So uh, can you tell us how this has gone from your perspective so far, knowing that we are still far from the end of this eclipse experience in Vermont? Yeah, well, this morning went fairly well. Uh, it few situations where some traffic backed up as it was coming into the state and uh, some backups at some of the welcome centers, but they were all taken care of and now they've all moved out, so everyone got to their destination. Uh, so now we are doing the reverse. We're waiting for those individuals once the partial gets done to, to head back home and then we will uh, take care of that and then uh, we should be all tied up. I mean, you make it sound like no big deal, <laughs> but do you, do you, there have been a lot of people coming into Vermont today. What, what's your estimate? Uh, we haven't even gotten close to an estimate yet. We're trying to kind of understand what's going on in the in the moment as opposed to being able to actually uh, understand how many people were here. Uh, so we had a couple calls from, uh, for example, St. Johnsbury uh, ran out of parking spaces, Newport ran out of parking spaces. You know, we had some backups on Route 7. So definitely a lot of people uh, came in today uh, with the nice weather. They woke up and decided to make the trek or turn it into a day trip. Uh, so that, coupled with the fact that individuals that came in through the weekend might be leaving, may mean the exodus is a little bit uh, harder than uh, getting here. So we're hoping that everyone is nice and patient. We are looking for everyone to stay out of the breakdown lane so emergency traffic can get through. Uh, but again, it's a nice it's a nice trip out of the state to so just enjoy it, uh, relax. Uh, take your time, and if you can stay a little bit longer, uh, please do. We got an alert from you as well earlier in the day that uh, the, the bathrooms weren't working at my favorite rest area, the Sharon rest area, which I believe has the Living Green machine, right? So you, you brought in some porta potty Sounds like yeah. you took care of it. That is, that is correct. Uh, they had some water capacity issues, so we had to uh, deal with that this morning, and the BTS crew and the AOC's crew did a great job taking care of it, so uh, accomplished. So in terms of people leaving, I mean, we are certainly seeing people clearing out here in St. John's very, very quickly. And, and I know that the, the what we've been hearing is if you've been riding on the highways, you have seen the signs. Please stay tight, sit tight for a little while, watch the end of the eclipse, maybe find a place to eat or get some cheese and crackers. What's your best advice for people who are trying to leave the state or leave where they are and go to somewhere else? When should they do that and what should we expect? Yeah, the longer you can delay your parts, the better. So uh, going out to dinner, maybe a movie, maybe staying another day would all be fantastic ideas. If, if that's a possibility, that will uh, get you past some of the traffic surge. Uh, but again, if you have to leave now, uh, we recommend staying on the on the interstate. Uh, you know, it's, it's Waze or Google is going to try to potentially get you off, but it'll get you off on some side roads that may not be any faster or may have other issues. So the interstates will be slow, but they are they're, um, the best course of action for you at this time. Oh, so that's interesting because some of the advice we had heard before was that the interstates were going to be crowded and you should stay off them and stay off some of those main thoroughfares like 15 and 2 and 100. But you're saying especially if you are coming from elsewhere and don't know the roads, just stick to those main roads, stick to the highways and just prepare to go slow? Correct. If you are a local and you know a back way to get somewhere and you understand uh, what a, a muddy road might look like, then, then okay. But if you're a uh, a visitor to the great uh, state of Vermont, and you should probably stay on the highway and just use it and understand that it might take a little bit longer. Uh, up at exits and have a snack or fuel up, um, but just try to stay on the interstate because that's the best uh, way out of the state at this point. Have you gotten calls from anybody who's been stuck in the mud or heard about uh, people getting stuck on, on muddy back roads? The state, we have not. Uh, those are being we get it at the lower municipality levels at this point. So we haven't heard of any major issues. Uh, but again, the, the towns have done a great job of preparing for this, understanding what they needed to do and getting it done and get the resources in that they needed to, to take um, take care of these residents and citizens that are coming in and the visitors as well. Uh, so hats off to them. And similarly, any, any reports of anything on Vermont trails and mountains, people have been advised to please stay off the trails. Not only are they very muddy, but you might have to wait a long while for help if you need any. Any reports of anything? Uh, both of those are accurate. We have been messaging that all along. We do know that uh, some individuals have not heeded that warning, so I, I believe there might have been rescue and so, but we're trying to confirm that. Okay. That's Eric Forand, Director of Vermont Emergency Management. I know you're very busy. Thank you for taking a few minutes to talk with us, Eric.
Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the eclipse. Yeah, you too. Happy Eclipse to you. I hope you got a chance to experience it as well. We're still live here in St. Johnsbury for another 10 minutes as we move through, continue to move through the second half of the eclipse. If you'd like to share with us what your experience has been like, we would love to hear it. You can call 800-639-2211. We have our first international call. Jim is calling from Spain. Hi, Jim. I think there might be a delay. Hi, Jim. Do you hear us from Spain? <laughs> oh, Jim, we lost Jim. Uh, let's go instead to Patrick, who's calling in from much closer, Lindenville. Okay. Hi, Patrick. Go right ahead. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi, Patrick. Yeah. yeah. I work at the diner down in St. Johnsbury, Anthony's. Yeah. And we had people galore <laughs> everybody was everybody was so friendly and patient it was really nice oh i'm and, so glad uh, to hear that patrick and, 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 and then i left about 30 and i can't believe how emotional this whole whole deal was it was very very nice patrick i think i can hear the emotion in your voice too what did that feel like to see the eclipse uh, it's just a, a, a different emotion. I, I, I got very emotional about it. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it was beautiful. It's... Everybody, everybody that I ran into said that they are very glad they came up. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Patrick, I'm so glad you got to experience it. I'm so glad you got off your shift and that everybody was wonderful at Anthony's restaurant earlier today in St. Johnsbury. Thank you for calling in and letting us know. I think we have Jim back from Spain. Great. Hi, Jim. You're on the air. Hi, and thank you for taking my call. Yes, we're up on a mountaintop in Spain here. Um, we live in the Gens, mm -hmm. but uh, we left uh, so much sad that we're going to miss this uh, event. But we really appreciated your coverage. Um, it was just beautifully moving. Um, and uh, again, we just wanted to just to chime in with a thank you for uh, for your efforts. Oh, thank you, thank Jim. You, Thanks Jim. for calling from Spain. Are you in partiality, or you're just getting like a tiny bit of it, right, in Spain? I don't think so. I think uh, they... No, we get none of it. We you watched none of we it. a beautiful sunset tonight. Right. The same sun that you were watching. We had a beautiful sunset out over the mountains here in Spain. Um, but it was really quite, mm. quite lovely to watch it on your program. Oh, thank Great. you. I'm glad you got to see it, and you're right. I guess it would be a, a bit late. I know some yep. of some folks in the, some parts of far uh, Western Europe are able to catch just a glimpse of partiality. Just as the sun was setting, yes. Um, we have a special call coming in from Patricia, and Patricia has a special connection to you, Mark. Okay. Patricia, you're on the air. Hello there, Mark. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Mom. Hello, Mom. This is Mark's mother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that... <laughs> We're in Pennsylvania. We just tuned into the KOA, but I've been listening to the radio broadcast all along on my phone. And it was great. I was just... I said, I just have to call him. <laughs> well, thanks, Bob. <laughs> okay, you, you got me. Cause <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Patricia, yeah. it's wonderful to hear from you. I'm so glad you got to experience this with Mark, even from Pennsylvania. It's a pretty unique That's thing. Wonderful. Thank you very much for calling in. <laughs> yep, and everybody here in St. John's Bray, Mark, a beloved figure here and, and throughout Vermont, as so many people know him, and, and what a wonderful thing to experience this with you, Mark. Oh, and to be same here, here Jane. This has just been fabulous. Let's talk to Julia in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Julia. Hi. What question do you have? When, during the solar eclipse, why do the shadows become crescents? Why do the shadows become crescents? Thanks uh -huh. for the call, Julia. That's a great question. And, and, of course, especially places where there are leaves, you get these little crescent suns. And what's happening is uh, the sunlight, when it goes little tiny holes, we call them pinholes, it actually creates a slight camera kind of effect or a, a little focus. And so you can do this on any time. You can actually see little round circles of the sun underneath, uh, for example, the tree. But when the sun is partially covered, you get the image of the sun partially covered, a crescent sun. 
I am so thrilled, I just have to say, Julia and others, to hear from so many kids calling mm. in, maybe some But Why fans out there, but also so many kids getting interested in science, getting interested in the landscape, maybe doing some citizen science on their own and observing what's happening on the landscape, and perhaps remembering this experience for the rest of their lives. Well, there's no doubt that an experience like this can, can really you know, lead a young person on to... to Something they didn't necessarily, you know, think anything of, of, and all of a sudden, this experience will change the path of their life. Let's go to Diane in Burlington. Hi, Diane. Hi. I just wanted to say this was an incredible experience that made me cry and brought <laughs> hope and joy to me. Why did it bring hope and joy to you, Diane? What is it about this experience that, that brought that surge of emotion? Because the world is so fractured and everyone around this country is experiencing this uh, wonder and beauty. Yeah, Diane, I, I share that. Thank you for mm -hmm. calling in. Thank you for sharing that perspective. I think we have time for one more call here um, from Alex, who's calling in from Brazil. Hi, Alex. Do you have a question? What is the sun made out of and how many people are watching the solar eclipse? Wow, Alex, thank you for calling. Mark, what is the sun made out of? And do we know how many people are watching the eclipse? All right, so the sun is made out of mostly hydrogen. Which and is a gas. Which is a gas normally, but with a lot of gravity and a lot of pressure, you can squeeze it into something a little bit more solid than that. And that's exactly what not only the sun is made out of, but it's what stars are made out of as well. And they discovered that during eclipses, which is fascinating to know. And there are perhaps at least 30 million people and maybe more that were in the path of this totality to be able to see the eclipse. So we don't know how many got to watch it, but right. there were potentially that many or more people who might have had the ability right, to Right, from so. Mexico all the way into Canada. Wow, well thank you to everybody who has called in this afternoon. Thank you to everybody who has been watching and listening here in St. Johnsbury and watching and listening on radio, TV, and on our streams. Thank you to Mark Breen, Planetarium Director at the Fairbanks and Museum in St. Johnsbury for joining us today. Thank, thank you, Thank you, Mark. Jane, it was wonderful, thank you. What a joy to have all of you here at the Fairbanks' Sun, Moon, and You event. Our solar eclipse coverage has support from Vermont Construction Company's Roofing Division and Norwich Solar. Our program was produced by Melody Baudet and Holt Alby. Our director was Mary Engish. Our call screener was Eric Ford. Our Vermont public crew included Frank Alwine, Karen Anderson, Riley Cartwright, Peter Engish, Kiana Haskin, Kaylee Mumford, Dave Rice, Brian Stevenson, and Joe Tomecki. Thanks as well to Amy Zielinski and Anna Rubin. I am Jane Lindholm. Thank you for joining us for this eclipse coverage. Safe travels, any everybody, and what a wonderful day to share with you. Thanks, everybody. from St. Johnsbury here on Vermont Public. Stay with Vermont Public for more local news, including updates on traffic and other eclipse-related safety information. And follow our live blog at vermontpublic.org. All Things Considered from NPR is next. <laughs> Here's the Eye on the Sky forecast from the Fairbanks Museum. It will remain quite pleasant late this afternoon as the sun has re-emerged and temperatures have rebounded after a brief dip.